Hey, this is Mike. Before I get started, please hit the subscribe button. I know you're going to love my channel. I have hundreds of videos just like this one of different makes and models. So go ahead and subscribe. Check out my channel. I'd really appreciate it. So here we are at East Coast Honda in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And they are allowing me to show you this 2015 Honda Accord two-door EXL. And this is a sweet little ride. It gets plenty of power. It's really peppy. And uh, it just has a nice sleek look to it. So let's check out the 17 inch aluminum wheels that are like a two tone paint, like a light and dark gray there. It does have four wheel disc brakes and Michelin tires. It's a pretty good size for a vehicle. I mean, it has um, pretty decent back seats, you know, two doors, you know, mostly used for, for two people mostly. But, um, you know, the back seats are a lot more usable than, you know, s some other vehicles. So here in the front, we have the projector system, headlight control, uh, headlights, and they are powered by halogens. So the projector, and then you have the reflector on this side for your high beams. Now the projector system allows it to focus the light in more in the areas in which you need it to look. And uh, if, uh, if you want to check that out in the more detail, you can check out my night videos. Just search for at night on my channel or you can see the playlist. And I kind of show the different lighting systems and um, actually talk to an engineer student about how they work and all that stuff. So you can check that out. But you can see here in the front, where they have some chrome accents and a, kind of a sporty, classy look to it. Let's take a look on this side. All right, this one has, let me show you the key. It has a, a proximity key. Here's the key right here, and um, it does have the ability to lock and unlock the doors, also open up the trunk by pushing buttons. But also, you can just leave the key, this little box, in your pocket. And you can lock and unlock the door, you can start the engine, all that good stuff. So, right now the engine's running, so I'm, it's not going to be able to lock. But, let's say it was locked. I could just walk up, put my hand behind the handle here, it un unlocks automatically, just by putting your hand on the handle. To lock it, you just push this button here and you are done as long as it, it it's like i said it's a proximity key so it senses the proximity of the key to the vehicle it also senses your hand behind the handle and unlocks all right so here's the inside of the passenger door super classy looking and kind of a sporty design as well and then you have that that two-tone there it has like a i think it's called a ivory interior and black Then you have that metal accent here around the handle, plus you have that kind of speckled, shiny black surface here. You have a little pocket there, a place to put a bottle or something there on the door, put some stuff. You have manual adjustments on the passenger seat, but check out those seats. With the color contrasting and the perforations in the leather, really impressive interior and the stitching look at the bolsters it's significantly bolstered as well let's take a look at the glove compartment just a regular plastic glove compartment plenty of leg room though as you can see all right so let's take a look in the back we'll just push this down and slide the seat forward and you can see back seats have pretty decent leg room and uh, they're bolsters, bolstered as well, very comfortable. You do have some storage pockets there on the sides. And these seats, they, they do fold down. I went ahead and unlashed it to show you. Let's see if I can get it over here. Yeah, they will fold down. It's not gonna fold down all the way because that seat's in the way, but you get the idea. In case you need some more cargo space, you do have the ability to do that. Right. 
and this seat will just, just push it back in place like that. I have the key in my pocket, so it's, it's beeping at me, letting me know. Alright, so let's open up the trunk using this button here. Plenty of room already, even without putting the seats down. And that's the, the lever to unlatch the seats, by the way. You do have some bright grocery bag hangers here on the side. And just overall good room. You also have this um, plastic liner that, that keeps everything um, contained in that liner so it's easy to clean. And then under here is your spare tire and tools. So definitely uh, this one does have a spare tire. Some vehicles are offered without a spare tire. So you want to make sure that you are aware of whether you have one or not when you buy a new car. Don't just assume that you have one. And there is a chrome exhaust tip for the 2.4 liter. 185 horsepower engine. Fuel door is on the driver's side. Let's go ahead and open it up and look in there. So there's the fuel door and uh, the cap just unscrews. You notice it's at, a, at an angle so it's really convenient to put the fuel nozzle in. And when you un Un unscrew the cap it has this plastic string here and uh, instead of just letting it hang down there's a little place right here to hang your gas cap so that way it's out of the way and it doesn't scratch your paint all right let's take a look under the hood check out that 2.4 liter 185 horsepower engine all right so right here just to the little bit of the right, or left, I mean, of the Honda symbol, is the latch right there. All right, here it is, 2.4 liter, Honda Earth Dreams Technology IV Tech. Now, I will leave a uh, link in the description ex explaining what the Earth Dreams Technology is. It's basically a kind of an Earth-friendly uh, design. They're trying to be more efficient with their technology. But I'll, it's a little bit more involved than that, which I'll leave that, like I said, in the description. So yes, you can actually see there's some engine under the hood. You don't have to just look at a plastic cover. It actually has some views of the engine. And then you've got that, that bar that goes from the top of each strut that helps support and stabilize the front end. Um, keep it more steady, I guess is the best way to say it. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look on the inside. All right, here we are on the inside. Got plenty of leg room, plenty of knee room. So let's go ahead and start here on the door. And it does have this little pocket here. You do have the space in the door for putting stuff, including this bottle holder. And your power windows, both of them are automatic. So you just push the button, it'll go up and down, whatever you wanna do. Door lock controls, you can lock out the power windows if you need to do that. And here is your side mirror controls. You just have to pick a side, left or right. Put it in the middle to, uh, to avoid messing up your mirrors. Uh, by accidentally hitting the button so here is we'll go start with the big shine the big shiny green one and that is the economy mode eco, eco mode and you push that button it tells the car that you want the best fuel economy possible now um, you do still have to drive decently you can't just you know floor it everywhere you go too so um, you know the vehicle will do its part to shift at certain times to uh, avoid using too much gas but it's not the type of uh, driving that you want to do if you're like on the way to the hospital or something like that this is when you want to sip gas you don't want to use as much gas you just want to you, know, you just want to go from point A to the point B use the least amount of gas 
So LDW, that stands for Lane Departure Warning System, it will keep an eye on the road with a camera and it will look at the lines. And if you start swerving outside of your lane or outside of you know your area without your turn signal on, it'll kind of alert you. It's gonna beep at you and say, um, you know, hey, you know, what are you doing? So um, and also you can always turn that off if you need to because sometimes the lines are not perfect and you might get false warnings or whatever. So you know at any time you can turn that off if you need to. The traction control um, that is always on unless you turn it off. And the only time you really want to turn it off is if you want to spin tires, like say if you're stuck in mud or snow and you need to spin tires to get out. All right. So down here, it's not really that visible, but down here, this button is when you want to uh, reset or recalibrate your, uh, the sensors in your um, tires. So it does have a, a tire pressure sensor your system and when you rotate your tires or if you happen to have a low tire and you fill it back up you push that button to reset that system and you notice it's completely it's kind of out of the way out of the sight because you don't really push that button very often all right so let's look at a steering wheel the steering wheel is leather wrapped with a stitching on the inside a smooth comfortable tightly wrapped quality leather steering wheel has some good thickness it does have a little bit of a give to it and um, to, you know to where it's not too hard on your hands if you're gripping a steering wheel for long periods of time and if it's digging into your hand uh, it might fatigue your hand so anyways okay so here on the right is your cruise control you just have to make sure you turn it on which the little indicator light will turn on there to let you know it's on and once it's on you can set it with this button change through your speeds if you need to if you go faster or slower then you can cancel it with that button so here on the left is um, your volume for your radio with the plus and minus. Change through the stations or your, your presets here. You can change the source like AM, FM, stuff like that. Satellite radio. And then this button right above it correlates with this screen. So I can push that button. You can see I just keep pushing it and it cycles through different options. And so radio, um, trip one, trip two, and then you have a screen here with a clock and a background screensaver or a um, wallpaper. So you notice it just has stars there now, but you can actually put any picture you want there. It's pretty neat. Just like your computer. Okay, so here is um, your Bluetooth system with your phone. So once you pair your Bluetooth phone with the system, all you have to do if somebody calls you is push this button. To hang up, you push that button. To, to make a call, you push this button and you can spell out you can say out the the numbers or the number you want to call or if it's somebody that's saved in your phone book on your phone you can say call and then their name as long as you say their name like it is spelled in in the phone book on your phone so um, you could also say tune to a certain station stuff like that so there's lots of different uh, voice commands that you can use it's a really good convenience feature but in addition to convenience it's a awesome safety feature because it's keeping your eyes on the road hands on the wheel while being productive you can you can make and receive calls you can change the radio all while keep you know focusing on the road so really really good safety feature uh, every vehicle should have that I highly recommend that that safety feature okay so on the steering wheel also hidden back here is a negative and a plus button and they are the paddle shifters where you can cycle through uh, the gear ratios, it is a CVT system, but it still has gear ratios. And you can, uh, you know, cycle through those if you want to really get sporty with it. And so here's your headlight controls. You know, you just turn it on and off uh, right there. Also, it has an automatic setting. Your fog lights can be turned on and off here. Your, wind, wind, your windshield wipers um, are controlled on that one. Okay, so here's your gauges. And it has like a, the red background. It's kind of a little sporty looking. It's got the big speedometer there in the center. RPMs there to the left. Your temperature and your fuel gauge there to the right. And you'll notice the little fuel pump here has a little arrow to the left, aiming to the left, uh, showing you which side your fuel pump's on, or fuel door is. Okay, so there in the center, you have the screen and it's showing the, uh, the miles of the vehicle, which is six miles. And then you have your trip A park is 90 degrees outside and then you have your average miles per gallon or your miles per gallon 
in real time. So pushing this button here, uh, you'll be able to cycle through some different information, average miles per hour, uh, miles per gallon, trip A, trip B, you have oil life, and then it cycles back. All right, so this big screen up here, like I showed you, you can cycle through. Let's go ahead and cycle through now. There's the radio screen. Go to the, the trip display. Um, this is like your current drive, uh, your instant fuel in the moment, and then your average fuel economy there. And then you go to your second one. Um, this, is your hist this is also your um, more information based on that trip. And then this is your clock with the background. So here's your radio, actual radio, with your volume and tune through the stations there. You have a CD player right here on top. And um, what's cool is you can. there's lots of different ways to play music. So you got AM, FM, satellite radio, CD player, USB, USB with the iPod, um, Bluetooth. You can play music wireless through, wirelessly through your phone or other Bluetooth device. You have Pandora. And also you have AHA, which is another Pandora-type program. Auxiliary input. I'll show you where all this stuff is in a minute. And uh, you can change the order if you want. So lots of different ways of playing music through the sound system. Um, there's, the sky is the limit. Really, I don't, I don't really understand the, the CD player, why people still use it, because there's so many other ways that's more convenient to play music, but hey, that's just me. So your climate control is down here and has a dual zone, driver and passenger. And you can, you can sync them. Right now they're synced. But at any time you want to unsync them, you just start adjusting the passenger and all of a sudden it goes back to um, an unsynced state. You can set it to automatic if you wanted to and just set the temperature and let it go. Or you can change the fan speed, uh, change where you want the air to blow, and um, recirculate the air. You also have front and rear defrosters. When you put the rear defrosters on, it will turn on the heated side mirrors as well. And there's your start button, this nice red candy-like button there. And uh, to start the vehicle, you just put your foot on the brake and push that button. And that's only if you have the key in your pocket. Um, so if you don't have the key with you, it's not going to start because it senses the key within a proximity of the inside the vehicle. Okay, so down here uh, we do have a like a storage compartment um, that's closable, and it goes in pretty far. And then you have this open storage compartment. And let me see what it looks like with my phone in there. Yeah, phone fits in there pretty good. It's kind of like not flat, but it fits in there. And also, you have a 12 volt power supply, an auxiliary input, and a USB input. Your heated seat controls are here to the right and left of the gear shifter, and your um, emergency brake is there. So, let's go ahead and change into reverse with the shifter. So you can see the backup camera pops up here. And the backup camera is a distorted wide angle fisheye lens. The reason why they use that is to give you the best visibility so you can see it behind the vehicle. But it allows for some distortion around the edges. So they help you uh, make sense of all this with these guidelines. So uh, the, that yeah, those yellow lines are actually you know, giving you a um, an estimated width of the vehicle, but also you notice it has that checkered line there. That checkered line is the absolute closest you want to get to something. The, the space between right here and here is only a few inches. Uh, it looks like several feet because the back here it's several feet. Up here it's just a few inches. So you definitely want to uh, pay attention to that. And that's the purpose of the, uh, the guidelines. So plus if you turn the steering wheel, you'll see that they actually move to give you an estimated trajectory of the vehicle while it's backing up. All right, so continuing on with the shifter, we go down to neutral. There's drive, and this is your normal drive position where you know it'll just shift through gears all, all its own. And then you have the sport mode. And the sport mode can be used with the paddle shifters to where you um, change through the gear ratios yourself, or <clears throat> you just put it in sport mode and just drive, and it will you know, really get into a sporty, sportier. You'll basically get the most power that the engine can give you it's kind of the opposite of the economy mode it doesn't you're telling the car that you need the most performance you don't really care about gas mileage right now so if you happen if you happen to want to use the paddle shifters you can just start cycling through you just just tap them 
And so right now, when I did that, you see it says M1, so it's a manual first gear. So as I drive, so if you accidentally hit the paddle shifter, all you have to do is move the shifter back into the drive position, and it's back into the normal change the gears by itself thing. Okay, so here's the cup holders, and um, you know they do have these little things that pop out in and out to take out the slack on different size cups. So there's your center armrest. And the center armrest lifts up, and this is where you'll find some more storage area. Plus, you'll find a power supply and a place to put some quarters. All right, and this is a tilt and telescoping um, steering wheel, steering column, and the control is down here. Just pull it forward like that, you adjust it where you want it, you can in and out, up and down, and then you just push it back to lock it in position. Okay, so up here is your rear view mirror. It's an auto dim rear view mirror. So as it gets dark, it'll dim itself a little bit to um, to avoid bright lights from blinding you while you're driving. And um, so that's that. You do have these tap lights if you want to use them as for a quick reading light. And then you have uh, the ability to turn the interior lights off even if the wind, like right, that position is where it says door. That's letting you know that the um, you know when you open up the door the lights turn on or you can just have it to where they do not turn on like that all right um garage door opener controls are here place to put your shades is here and this button is for your sunroof so it has a shade so you can open it up you can vent the sunroof like that or you can open it up all the way And like on a pretty warm day like today, uh, I don't even want the sun shining in here so I can close the shade. And you do have mirrors and lights and the visor there. All right, let's take a look at the visibility behind the vehicle. Pretty good view. Alright, there you have it. 2015 Honda Accord two-door EXL. If you have any questions, comments, clarifications, anything like that, leave it in the comment section. If you have any experience with a vehicle like this, um, leave it in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Thank you to East Coast Honda for allowing me to show off this awesome car. And I'll see you guys next time.